everybody. This is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation into glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. All right, let's see if the fourth time's the charm. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm just so excited to be on here today and, and talking with David about the glory. Been trying to get on for like 10 minutes, and the funny thing is, is we just tested it and everything was working great. But that's okay, because it's gonna be good today. And any idea that the Holy Spirit has, I just want to, to move on the Holy Spirit. So, hey, Mom, as you're logging in live, just tell me where you're logging in from. Bless her at work, Lord. Just give her more glory, more favor. Just let her feel the power and the presence of God. Just invade over her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just let them feel this, this weighty glory that I feel right now. Just let it wash over them right now. I just thank you, Jesus. I just come against any resistance. I just shut it down in the name of Jesus Christ. I just put a wall of fire and a hedge of protection. Thank you, Lord. I'm in Dallas. Hey, friend. <laughs> hey, David. Let me guess. Let's see if this, this Facebook's going to let David on here today. Let's see if the request is going to go through. Hey, Kim. How are you? Maybe it's just timed out, David. Hopefully that request will show up any second. I just uh, ask you, Lord, to bless Kim as she's watching right now. I just say, let your glory just wash over her. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Can't wait to see you guys again. <laughs> David's not coming on yet. I added him, dear. My husband's giving me instructions. He's been added. So, Lord, we just asked it to show up. Let the request show up. We just have a powerful uh, teaching that that uh, the Holy Spirit just, uh, I just feel the teaching anointing here today. So I might pull on his teaching gift just a little bit, David. If you're on here, I might pull on your teaching gift just a little bit because I, I just feel like people are hungry for the supernatural. And, you know, the whole reason I started this group is um, just talking about the glory Um just talking about the glory and allowing the glory of God to um, manifest in people's lives. And uh, it's just, I just feel the heavy weighty presence here. So Lord, I just release that. Just We just want to let your glory flow. Just allow it to flow over everybody watching. And we just want to talk about um, how you first experienced the glory, what kind of miracles you've seen in the glory. And uh, just from people from all walks of life, the Holy Spirit just wanted me to, to just teach about as daughters and sons, we have access to the glory. And it's, it's you know, that just, that's it. Just accepting Jesus Christ in your heart is, is the only thing you have to do to, to be a glory carrier, to carry his presence. You know, it says in uh, Ezekiel 44, 4, that the glory filled the temple. Hey, Anita, how are you? Um, David, if you're still on here, you can request to be added. Uh, Lord, we just declare that to come through right now. Um, I tried to add him. Lord, um, let's try this again. Thank you, Jesus. We just declare everything to work. It's just so funny how you test things. I don't want to get too deep into this and, and then go over it again. But, uh, Lord, I just released your presence. I thank you, Lord for uh, touching everybody under the sound of my voice. So if you're on here, just, just be agreeing with me, the technical difficulties to stop. Oh. So Lord, you just, you just want this out today. We just come into agreement, Lord, that, that what you want to do here today is going to happen. 
So, Lord, I just declare your breakthrough happens in people's lives today. In the name of Jesus Christ. But I was talking about, uh, here we go. Maybe it's finally going to take it. Thank you. David should be on here any second. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you guys for praying. It's like a fifth time. So it must be good today. I'm, I'm just thankful. All right. We got it, David. <laughs> hey, how you doing? All right. I was thinking, man, it must be good today. We just tested this thing and it worked fine. And I then, know. It's all, always interesting when that happens. I know. So I'm just excited. I, I'm glad to have you on today. It's such an honor um, just to have you on today and, and just to I just want to brag about the amazing leader that you are. You're multifaceted. You know, you're that spiritual mentor. You do the Sears group. You have a ministry called David Michael Ministries. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming on and just uh, welcome you to to just share and, and open up and just share what the Lord's been doing in your life this season and go wherever you want to go. Well, thanks for having me, April. Um, you know, we connected in October out mm -hmm. in Turlock at one of Jennifer Evez's events, a series yeah. of prophets events, and that was uh, and that was fun. Uh, you know, I guess the first was the 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 leaders group, the small leaders group, and then we we went into a dose of Jeff Jansen and Charlie Champ and Jennifer <laughs> Evez, which is Amen. kind of like drinking from the fire hose. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and we've connected a few times, so I'm excited to see what you and you and Richard are doing. It, it's it's kind of fun to see. Um, you know, I, I have a little gray hair here, but it, <laughs> it's it's fun to see. You know, the younger generations, and younger is anybody younger than me, uh, <laughs> that are that are stepping up and going for it, because there's so much going on right now in. Um, in the body of Christ, in the spirit world, uh, you know, God is, is I believe, you know, don't know when, I mean, we could talk about when, how many years ago, uh, we're in some new seasons and God's Amen. doing, some, God's doing some new things that weren't available and weren't, um, widespread, like when I was coming up in, in some of this. So it's really exciting to see. Uh, what's happening and it's really a time of um, acceleration of, of uncovering of revelation just just a bunch of you know a bunch of things like that so it's it's <laughs> kind of fun to just be riding the wave and um, you know God uh, told me before he goes you're a Caleb and, <laughs> and the inter interesting thing about Caleb is he was an old dude uh, he and Joshua were the, were the two old dudes who who helped lead the children of Israel in the promised land. Amen. And, but they, they didn't give up. Uh, in fact, they were leaders. In fact, you know, Caleb at age 85 said, you see that mountain over there with all those giants on it? That's mine. I'm going to go do that. Amen. Well, that's, that's kind of uh, my perspective on things. I sold um, a business I had three years ago and everybody goes, Oh, you're retiring, you're retiring. And I go, no, I'm, nope. I'm not retiring. <laughs> yeah. I am refocusing, reforming, um, you, you know, those sorts of things to just to move forward. Because now, now the fun stuff is starting to happen. Amen. That's what I loved about you. You know, I just, I sensed your hunger day number one when I met you. And I'm like, he's going for it. I just love that. I, I could see that Caleb spirit in you very easy. But it's funny, like, even as, you know, we've talked and prayed some and connected kind of since the leadership meeting. But even um, as we were getting on this, I felt a unity in the spirit with you. And, you know, it, it was just powerful and, and, and just common, you know, like-mindedness. And um, one of the things I saw just increasing over you was a huge grace for deliverance material. Whoa. And just declare that over you, a huge grace for writing deliverance material. And I, I just, um, I just sense that, that grace upon your life. So um, if you want to kind of share just a little bit about what made you hungry for deliverance and um, it, it, anywhere you want to go with it, go with it. Well, first of all, I received that. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I never started out to be a deliverance guy, um, but, but I've always been at a warrior. I mean, my name is David Michael. And so if you know who David is, 
in, in scripture. If you know who Michael is in the, in the scripture, they're both warriors. Um, they're wor they're worshipers. They're they're they they have um, you know even the, even their names you know beloved uh, beloved of God you know that sort of thing. That's that's who I am. And back in the uh, you know when I was raised, I guess. I was raised a Christian, more in a Bible church and in some Baptist church. So there was a real suppression of of, of spiritual gifts, and and uh, you know among other things. So that was that was a challenge for me growing up. I really suppressed a large part of of who I was. Uh, you know, my creativity even uh, was in a box, and kind of in my twenties. You know, which would have been in the 80s, I, I, I crashed and burned. I, I, I crashed and burned. And, and I remember one night when I said, you know, I just cried out to God, I can't fix myself. And and that's really when I started uh, ju just full throttle going, you know what, I need deliverance. Because because if, if it's not for anybody else, it's for me. It's for me. Amen. And so since, since then, so I've been on a 30 plus year journey of personal freedom and deliverance. Uh, and just because I want it, I need it. And, and I see, you know, Jesus said some things about what we can do, what we can experience, you know, greater things, you know, you can do. And so I know there's some things out there. I'm not there yet. But if he said it, I want it. And, and I want to be able to move into that fullness. And if there's anything keeping me from that fullness, then I need to address it personally. OK, Amen. so so that's that's one thing that drives me. Um, the, the, the other, the other thing is I did some, I did some mentoring with Doug Addison uh, a few years ago and, and actually just came back from Vacaville school of prophetic trainers. And there, there's a, a one day workshop on processing, uh, your prophetic words. And one of the words that I, I, I chose to uh, help process was, uh, from 2012 to Doug Addison that gave me. And he starts it with, you know, you're Abraham Lincoln, you free the slaves, you know, you're Amen. a deliver you're a deliverer. <laughs> and um and say, so, okay, uh and there there's 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 a lot more a lot more to that. But that's that's kind of kind of who I am. It makes me mad when I see people, sons and daughters, who the enemy has has beaten up, has killed things in their life, has stolen from them. It makes yeah. me mad. Because I know he's done it to me, and and I see he's done it to 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 my friends. I see he's done it to you and Richard. And I say, you know what? Um, I'm not happy with that. God is not happy with that. That's why Jesus. That's why the Father sent Jesus. You know, his whole mandate, Isaiah 61, which he said in Luke 4. You know, I have come, you know, so that they might have life. I've come to free the captives, to set the prisoners loose, you know, to heal the brokenhearted, all that sort of thing. So that's kind of big, big picture. And, and, and actually, if we look at that, there is a lot more in those verses and in, in that mission statement than we typically think. Okay. And so um, just, I, it, I have a lot of tools in my toolbox because I've sat down and done a lot of work. Amen. Okay. And so, you know, I've done Theophostic, I've done Libesters, I've done Sozo, I've done RTF, I've done Elijah House, I've done Athens Place. <laughs> no wonder I relate to you. I've done you a know, lot of those I, same I've done, things. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've done, you know, some of Dan Duval stuff. I've done, um, you know, a bunch of, probably some others that don't come to mind right this second because number one, they're all hitting truth from a little bit different perspective. We'll go over Amen. And, and, and uh, they all see the same truth, but it's, it's, it's coming through their filter of their giftedness, their anointing, you know, Amen. the revelation that God has given them. So I want to learn from them. And then I want to take from them uh, what is, is applicable, applicable to me that I can use personally and that I can put in my toolbox to use for others. Okay, so that's that's kind of no, I, mean, I forgot Arthur Burke, Sapphire Leadership Group, learned a lot from him. So from from deliverance, you know, we 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 tend to buttonhole. Oh, those are the demon busters. Okay, 
and and, and so people, uh, some people, they're scared of it. They run from it. Yeah. I use I use deliverance in a really broad term. It's just delivering people from something. Amen. It, 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 it could be from an evil spirit, but it also could be from a lie. It could be from a curse. It could be, yeah, it's, it's really anything that's keeping them from walking in the destiny and the calling that God has for them, uh, you know, including, including, and especially their identity. So, you know, God's, God says, you know, we're, we're here and the enemy wants us here. And so anything in that way, we, you know, we want, we need to deal with, we want to deal with. And um, so that's, that's what it means to me. The, the, and honestly, um, so I have a mentoring group here in Dallas and we've been meeting together about um, almost a year now. And it's, 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 it's just some people who would continue to put up with me and they're, they're kind of, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of as weird as I am. Um, mm -hmm. And, and uh, but they're, I, I, I tend to uh, attract people who are very highly gifted, who are misunderstood, who um, are kind of spiritual outcasts in a way that, you know, the church hasn't accepted them for, 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 for some reason. Um, usually because they're very highly gifted and because we can go when we deal with our stuff and, and we start working together with God and we start working together as a group, there's a, there's a synergy and we can do, we can do so much more. Um, it's kind of like the disciples, you know, God, uh, Jesus called this, this group, motley group of, of, of dudes that all had issues Okay. Amen. They all had issues and, and they weren't all healed and fixed while Jesus was still around. I mean, they were still a work in process. Um, but then they went and those, those um, original 11 plus one that was added, they changed the world. Amen. Well, you, know, you know what? This is a time of changing the world through Amen. small, small dynamic groups of, of super powered people Amen. And, you know, we see that prophetically, we see that in the movies that are coming out. Um, mm -hmm. we, we see, you know, all, for, for years, we've seen all these superhero movies, uh, you know, Superman, Batman, uh, you know, and, and now we're starting to see them come together to uh, defeat a bigger enemy than just Amen. one of them being on their own. So you, you, see, sure. you see that in the X-Men, you see that in the Avengers, Amen. that sort of thing. And, uh Actually, Hollywood is one way I pick up on how God is moving, you know, <laughs> the big picture in the world. Because, you know, God is, God is the creator. Uh, he's the one who creates everything. He gives people ideas. He gives, you know, so, so the art and entertainment industry, when you see uh, the movies, the TV shows, you know, the music that comes out, they, you know, it's not all great. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I'm not saying it's all redeemed, but but God is still speaking through people, His sons and daughters, some of them Christians, some of them pre-Christians. And so, if you pay attention to themes that are coming out of, like for instance, Hollywood, that can can give us some clues on what's going on. Amen. I can relate so much to what you're saying. That's probably why I felt the unity in the spirit because I graduated from supernatural school like two years ago. And then God said, I want you to read RTF book. I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's like 300 pages. And then it was just, you know, Sozo after that and then advanced Sozo and the list goes on and on like you, but I think we share the same passion because in John 8, 36, it says that who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's right. You know, and I, I think both of you, we probably just been through so much stuff. We don't like to see people get beat up by the enemy period, you know, and I, I, I just want to see the victorious church. You know, I don't, I want, I don't want to see people go into church all their life and still struggling with rejection or, you know, whatever insecurity, you know, whatever the issue would be. You know, we want to see people's freedom. And I felt such a heavy weight when you said um, about the Avengers and the team ministry. I really believe that, that God is, is highlighting teams just as we're doing this together. There, there's a, 
you know, there's a portal that opens up when you're in unity with people in the spirit. And it's so natural, you know, for it, for things to flow when you have that unity in the spirit and, and God locks arms and locks teams together. And I could just <laughs> see very easily like deliverance ministry teams. Don't you agree? Absolutely. So, you know, some of my group, you know, deliverance is, is new to them. They'll say it's new to them um, <laughs> anyway, which may or may not be true. But uh, but um, I, I model it in in my group. Amen. And, 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 the th- and the thing is, I don't have to be the best person uh, at everything. And, and and I've got some people I won't mention by name right now. Maybe I will. But, um, <laughs> that I that I'm really excited about. Because, you know, it says that we all see in part. So we're all getting a piece of the puzzle. So I, I, I've got um, Audrey, who is who is this amazing feeler. You know, I've got Jay, who's this amazing seer. You know, I, and, and I've got, you know, John, who's this amazing, uh, you know, dream guy. And he, he, he gets these amazing words. And, and um, you know... Uh, I could go down the list, you know, Jordan and Jen, <laughs> Jordan and Jen, who, who uh, see things in Chinese characters, you know, that's it's, awesome. It's, it's, it's <laughs> that's because, really cool. because the Chinese characters, it's kind of like a pictogram. It, it, it has both the word meaning and, and, and a picture green meaning. And, and, and Rochelle is so sensitive to people and, and, and Chanel, um, who just has a real powerful anointing on them. So we get, we get together and we do deliverance on each other. And, Amen. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, my, the way I've done deliverance has changed. Uh, you, you know, back in the eighties and, and growing up, I, I, I grew up living in a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it was the way, it was, it was the way the enemy took me out, you know, at an early age and, and and so you can still battle from that place, but it's really hard because yeah. <laughs> I would get so beat up. There's a lot of that's lot a familiar of story. A lot yeah. of deliverance ministries have that. I mean, start out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but and, and so that's why identity is so important. Amen. It's, it's true. Knowing that I'm a son, mm-hmm. not a servant. Amen. Knowing that I'm a king, I, I, I walk in the room. I don't want a lot of manifestations. Amen. I, I, I don't want a lot of craziness. And, and, and if it starts, just you guys, just stop it. Yeah. And, and, and you build this history with, with, with God, um, you, you know, Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit. You, mm-hmm. you build this history with the angelic host. You build this history with, with your own self and your own identity. And, and, and you accumulate victories and and you walk into a room, and this is the way I do it now. You know, if I discern something and there's some demonic, yeah, we, we may need to know uh, what a legal right is. We may clean up that up beforehand, or we may clean that up after afterwards. Yeah. But we just walk in and say, guys, um, you're not supposed to be there. You know, you just need <laughs> to learn so that I can free this person up. And yeah. you know, if, if if you really want to get down to it. You know, you, you can see, you can see the fire, you can see the angels, you can see, uh, you, you know, the authority in the spirit realm that that I walk in, that my friends walk in, so we can do this the easy way or the hard way. And so sometimes <laughs> that's all it takes. Amen. That, that's what I loved about you. Even before you got on, I felt your teaching anointing very strong. You have a strong teaching anointing. So I just was going to pull on that because I feel like people, as they watch the replay, they can relate to that. So um, I'll just pull on your, your leadership. You know, I just seen a new mm-hmm. grace even right now coming on you for leadership, just higher levels. I just saw it like falling on you as you were speaking. So I just bless you with that. But um, just share some of the challenges of just mentoring um, seers or just some of the, the ways. Just feel free to, to share whatever you think the Holy Spirit's leading you on because I know seers are probably going to be watching this. And, you know, we have our own set of challenges. We're just wired different. I mean, the scripture talks about in Second Samuel twenty four eleven. you know, David consulted a seer. There's so many verses about seers. So just, just share some of your 
challenges or leaderships, um, things that you've went through with that? Well, I, I mean, the, the first thing is, is uh, and I've served in the prophecy rooms at Upper Room here in Dallas for, for uh, several years, and whenever anybody would show up, you know, and, uh, and there, we'll call them out of joint. Um, <laughs> uh, but I detect that they have some sort of a seeing gift. Um, I normalize it for them. I I, I I just I just say, hey, here's what's going on. That's awesome. And and and, and let me say this: I believe everybody can see. There, Amen. There's some, there, there's, some, there, there's some people that you know uh, really have a special gift to see in the spirit at, at a higher level. But I believe everybody can see in the spirit. Amen. Okay. But but you, you know, there's really f four main ways that we that we I'll, I'll call it see, but it's 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 see, it's feel. Um, it's perceive or no. Um, God, where's the fourth one? Um, taste, smell, taste. Well, uh, that's part of feeling. Yeah. Um, oh, hearing. Duh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, hearing. And so, you know, they're, they're designed to work uh, synergistically. All those gifts are designed to work synergistically. Mm -hmm. But we start usually with one that we do the best. And so we just, we, we, we own that gift or, or we own whatever that flow, if you will, Amen. we purify it. That's where deliverance comes in. Amen. The reason we purify it is so that when, as we're getting a flow from God, you know, and, and we're supposed to do something with that flow, we want, if clean water comes in, we want clean water to go out. Amen. And so, and so we can defile it, you know, we can warp it, we can twist it, uh, you know, um, a, a picture, a word, uh, something. If we're not clean and pure, purified ourselves, Amen. none of us are perfect. Amen. Um, but the more we clean up ourselves, the cleaner the flow is out as we minister to others. And when I say minister to others, um, I don't want to use that in a churchy context. My, fa my favorite people to give a drive-by to, if you will, are... <laughs> Our waiters, amen. People at the gas station when I'm filling up my gas tank, and amen. people cutting my hair. Okay, yeah. Be because you're 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 just seeing them for a very brief moment, but um, yeah, you know, some people like you know the grocery store, Walmart, or or, or <laughs> wherever. Amen. So, you know, it can be. I just get an impression for them. I just ask, hey, um, is this going on with you? And then just you know, it, it can take 30 seconds. Amen. So um, that's just something that, that I like to do uh, with people and I encourage other people to do because then you're owning your gift and you're starting just like a muscle. You want to exercise it. Yeah. You know, if you need a safe place, you can find, um, uh, you know, if you're, if you're in a city that, a, that a church has a prophecy room, great place to uh, try to practice. If you're not in a city, like there are a lot of uh, prophetic communities uh, online on Facebook that you can join yeah. and practice giving prophetic words to, Amen. you know, however you see, however you feel, however you know, however, however you hear. So, so I, I, I try to normalize it for them. Um, I have a lot of weird supernatural experiences myself, okay? <laughs> And, and so, um, I, I actually, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this. Uh, I was out in Vacaville. I was going, uh, a course I'm going to do or a book I'm going to write or something, something like practical mystical living, you know, <laughs> I love um, it. <laughs> you, you know, so, you know, so, something, balance. You know yeah, so, yeah. something like that. So how do we use it in real life? Yeah. Well, uh, if if it's who God made us to be, then then we own it and we start using it. And then we, we one thing people don't do, interestingly enough, is they don't just ask Holy Spirit or God, God, what's going on? Amen. Why, why am I seeing this? Why am I feeling this? Why do I know this? You know, why is this weird thing happening to me? <laughs> um, and, and, why am I seeing a turkey by the road? You know, these random things happen. They just happen. That's right. Um, so, you know, we, we, we start the dialogue 
uh, with Holy Spirit. And then we find people that that we can learn from or that can help help us understand what's going on. So that's that's why I started my mentoring group. Amen. And, and that's why, um, you know, there's a number of mentoring groups that I'm aware of online you can join. I'm probably getting ready to roll one out here in the next couple of months myself, um, you know, for, for people, because I'm also a father, you, you know, and um, for, 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 for I, I think if you ask my group, they would tell you that uh, it's a safe place. Amen. You, you can come and not only share your stuff and, and, and get some get some healing deliverance yourself. You can practice your gifts, okay? Because we want to do that in tandem, okay? Yeah. We, we, we don't get deliverance just so we can go about, uh, you know, everyday life and, and, and not be afraid. We get deliverance so that we can walk in our calling and our gift. Amen. That's really it <laughs> at the end of the day. You know, that that's probably why. We, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, I was gonna, we're still going to talk about the glory, but the Holy Spirit's camping on this deliverance because, you know, glory comes in deliverance. But at the end of the day, what is hindering people from walking into why God put them on the earth in the first place? That's powerful. You know, and, and like you, I, I see um, prophetic mentoring happening more and more. That's why I actually saw a picture of a webinar when I first started the webinars. And that's how the Lord spoke to me about starting webinars. I saw the picture and he said, start a webinar. And I'm like, okay. But like you did, I kind of made it a safe place. I activated people in the prophetic. I had them prophesy. I had assignments every week where they were safe to prophesy. And like you said, we... We normalize seeing for these people because as a son and daughter, you can see. You look with the eyes of un your understanding, which is your heart, and your imagination. And and uh, how many people don't understand, you know, that an imagination is from God. You want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, but uh, I want to do I want to do this first. I'm feeling this. Um, I want to I want to talk to the feelers. Amen. OK, because when we see things. You, you know, um, God does, God uses our imagination absolutely to speak to us. And those images that we see, ha however brief, they are a form of a, of a, of a vision or some sort of visual input. You know, it, it, it can be um, a, as vivid as, you know, you just see me, uh, uh, you know, you or, you or me here in real life, or it can be just a, an internal image that we see. Um, yeah. Typically, that that's a a, a playing a playground, okay? And and I, I want to use that because God wants to play there. Amen. Okay? But the that's enemy, yeah. the enemy wants to play there too. Yep. So if, if you're seeing horrific images, if you're seeing scary things, everything yep. that means something's going on. That um, and God, th there is freedom, there is victory for that. So mm -hmm. that you you. Uh, are not tormented by that okay Amen. so sometimes that's a little bit easier to understand because you because you're seeing things but the feelers oftentimes they have no grid they they walk into a room <laughs> and, and and they it's go true. Well, so okay so you know last thursday uh, i'm i'm out in vacaville i'm invited to um to a gathering private gathering and and there are a bunch of prophets and very highly prophetic people in the room Okay, that are nationally and internationally known, and uh, and, and I started feeling rejection. No. I don't want to be here, <laughs> and, and 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 I started feeling like I want to die. Mm. I want to die. I just I just and what I've learned from that is so who can relate. You can relate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill and picking so, up people's. Yeah. So, some of you people can relate. Um, what I've learned is when I start feeling like that, there's a death spirit that is, is an operation and people can be suicidal. Yeah. Okay. Or sometimes they come to um, the death of a vision, the death of a calling, you know, mm. the, the death spirit wants to kill all those things. And, and I, and I think, I think what was going on and, and of course, like idiots okay we didn't talk to each other about it we just kind of all endured it. we're all like what's going on yeah and 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 I can come relate upon, to that i'm a 
Okay. You know, and then the next day yeah. come to find out that, you know, there were, I don't know, a half dozen or 10 people in the See, room. See, team who, ministry. Team that were, ministry. <laughs> yeah, we were feeling the exact same thing. Oh, and wow. um, since I was new to that group, I, I, I didn't I didn't voice it. Um, I probably should have. Oh, but uh, I'm going, hey, guys, I, I, I'm here to be mentored myself. So <laughs> why, why don't you guys step up? But some sometimes. So, OK, so I, I just want to normalize this for people. Yeah. Sometimes you go in and these overwhelming feelings that you're getting. Amen. It, it, they're not you. Amen. They're, they're, they're not you, but God wants you to learn how to manage what's going on. And so there's this dance. We don't want to come into agreement with that. Amen. Okay. But we want to learn how to manage it. And we don't always have to do something about it. Yeah. Okay. It, it may He's be, made the mistake of doing something about it before. <laughs> well, I've never done that. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just picking, yeah, yeah, yeah. People can relate to that. But but maybe I just say you stay on your side of the room and I'll stay on my side of the room. Yeah. You know, amen. or you can't pick on these people over here. You go stand in yeah. that corner until I'm gone. Yeah, amen. <laughs> and 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 so as your gifts get elevated, okay, and as you get more history with God, that increases. The scope increases to where it, it's not just the people you're with. Uh, may not even be church. Because for me now, um, honestly, it, it, it goes on a geographic scale. Amen. And, and so, um, you know, in, in my travels the last couple of years, <laughs> going to Scotland, going to Italy, going to uh, France, going to, you know, it's tough traveling for Jesus. Okay. <laughs> um, going to different places around the United States. Uh, things happen that he wants me to do stuff with at, at, a, at a state and a national level. But let me tell you, you don't want to start there. Okay. I, I see I see a guy in my church is posted in our private Facebook group where he goes, um, and he's a fairly young guy. And he goes, um, God has given me a strategy to go take down the principality over a, a major city in California. And, and, and my concern is, I don't know him that well, and, and, and my concern would be, has he processed that with anybody? Amen. Because that, I, amen. That's your leadership gift, looking out for the young ones. <laughs> yeah, because that type of mission yeah. rarely you know God the Holy sends, Spirit, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, yes. You know that you know. Or, 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 or maybe, uh, maybe it's a true mission. But Amen. you're misinterpreting the scale or the scope. Yeah, that's good. Amen. You know? Or or maybe you're supposed to be looking for other people to join in this whole group context. Amen. Um, you, you know, to, to go do that. But I, I'm I'm not aware that he has, and so that that type of thing concerns me. But I also know that um, everybody's not gonna listen to what I have to say. And yes. yeah. and, and 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 while everybody is welcome to take what they need from who I am and what I say, I'm not necessarily called to um, to speak into everybody's life. Yeah. Okay. I have I have my um, my people and my people groups, whatnot yeah. that that I tend to flow with. Uh, that that was interesting. Um, yeah, just that got, was interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I just got pause the broadcast. So, um, so um, I don't know if you, you 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 may be aware, but the the angels that have been around since even before this 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 uh, we started this whole thing. So, amen. <laughs> yeah, you you got this interesting halo thing going on. <laughs> Let it be, Lord. Let it be. It's so, it's so funny. We might have to do a part two to this because evidently the Holy Spirit's just breathing on this. I didn't realize we've been on here for a while, but something you said is just very powerful, and I feel like we're supposed to camp there. And um, I had a friend call me today from Israel 
And, you know, I won't mention names or anything, but um, he was just mm -hmm. calling for prayer, you know, because, you know, I, I agreed to be like a watchman, you know. And um, the first thing the Holy Spirit tells me is to bind the strong man of discouragement in that region. Whoa. And when he binded that discouragement out of the region, like you said, as a feeler, we can go somewhere. And as a prophetic person, sometimes we need other people like iron and sharpening iron to say, and I can, you know, you're dealing with this and you think it's you. You're like, you know, how quickly we can go into, oh my gosh, am I okay, Lord? Do I need to renounce? Do I need to, you know, what am I agreeing with in my mind? Instead of phoning a friend and saying, what do you see? You know, what's going on? And as soon as he came out of agreement with it and took authority and binded the strong man in the region, then his whole attitude shifted. Yeah. You know, and I, I was just so thankful that the Holy Spirit revealed. And then I had another friend call me with the same scenario. She was dealing with something and the Lord told me to bind the strong man. Yes, I'm going to say it. The strong man of Jezebel in that region. And then her, the atmosphere around her shifted. So I think as, as people go and, and start feeling and sensing, one of the things I'm learning just by trial and error, like you said, when you go all over the world, you know, whatever's in that region wants to talk to your mind, wants to talk to your thoughts and make you come in an agreement with it. And how, you know, as prophetic people and feelers and seers, as you're talking about, how you really have to just be close to the Holy Spirit or phone a friend and have accountability, have people that you can rely on and say, this is going on. What do you see? Because I, I, like you, I agree. We all see in part. We can't, we can't, no way can we all carry everything. I mean, who wants to do that anyway? You know, but that was two valuable lessons that, that I'm learning because when I go to new regions to, to take every thought captive, you know, when you're a different part of the world or a different, even state sometimes. Um, yeah, because, you know, we're, we're used to feeling, we get kind of numb, if you will, to yeah. our, own, our own territory. But when yeah. we go into new territory, we, it's the feeling and whatever's going on is new to us. And so, but, but I want to, and, and so really what we're talking about is, is deliverance on a geographic scale, land deliverance, territory deliverance, um, that sort of thing. Um, but we don't stop there, okay? We don't stop there because it, it's not just freeing the land, it's also blessing the land, yeah, yeah. blessing the territory, blessing the country, whatever. We, we all, the, the, the land, um, the country, the, the church, the company, whatever the organization is, they also have a calling and a destiny upon their lives. Amen. Okay. And, and we want to release them into, into being who um, God's called them to be the, the actual word. I'm, this is one thing I'm studying right now. Um, so like John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. Right. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we interpret that? We, inter we, you know, I've always interpreted it as all the people. Well, the actual Greek word is cosmos. <laughs> it's 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 really all of creation for god so loved all of creation that he sent jesus so that we can bring um deliverance freedom healing blessing you know, know. Not, not just to the people that's of course that's really important but but also to the rest of creation because we know you know from like romans one that all creation cries out amen you know um, you know, where, where it says, you know, even the stones would cry out, you know, the Amen. Jesus is Lord, you know, so creation is groaning for a, a righteous king and a righteous God as well. And so wh why is that important? Well, land um, and the in creation has gifts and resources that God hid in them to Amen. release to his sons and daughters to to help us walk into who we're supposed to be. Okay, that's why it's important. <laughs> it's so true. And, you know, I, like, a lot of people, they may have not heard of land deliverance before. And, you know, just depends on our audience. But if you haven't, you know, we you only um, go after that if Holy Spirit tells you. Like we both know Jennifer Vez does. And a lot of, you know, um, other people carry that anointing. But I would say if Holy Spirit did not tell you, just bind it, shut it down when you're at that place. Like ask the Holy Spirit, like you said, it, it boils down to having a conversation with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what's going on with this land? What's happened here? You know, do I, do I need to bind the strong man of, you know, confusion or, or whatever it could be? 
and, and basically it boils down to a conversation with the Lord and trusting the Lord. Like you said, having no fear and saying, what is my assignment here? Am I just to bind it and move on? Or do people get an assumption just because God told you the strong man that you go after it? My advice would be not to do that <laughs> unless Holy Spirit says. And um, because, you know, we battle, we don't battle against fresh and blood, but against principalities and rulers. And, um, you know, as you were talking about the whole, the earth just wants his glory. You know, we want to release his power and his presence. Well, what hinders the glory? It's these rulers. You know, so I, I think God is, like you said, raising up a new breed of land deliverers. It's, it's getting talked about more and more. There's more and more education coming out of it. And just talk about um, repentance if you want to. Just uh, I, I know um, how strategic repentance is, period. Well, um, that, it, repentance is a game changer. Amen. Uh, okay, because it, it, it's really... It's really coming into agreement with uh, what God says is going on, okay, yeah. rather than what we think is going on or what the enemy tells us is going on, okay. Yeah. And it, it all it all starts with with our salvation experience. You, you know, we, we repent of rejecting Christ. Um, we, we repent of not knowing, you know, what whatever. Um, we repent of our of our sinfulness so that we can. Um, become alive spiritually through Jesus. Okay, and and if there's anybody who's listening to this that you have a question about that, and you don't know that you have, you know, Jesus Christ living, you know, in, in you, and you need it and you want it, just it's it's really simple that Jesus, I need you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and I repent. Okay, then what we what we see is that as the enemy has worked over the millennia, I might add, to, to get people, you know, started in the garden, to, to get people to agree with a lesser standard than what God said, you know, what happened? Sin came into the world, you know, through, through Eve's sin. Okay, well, it's no different in our bloodline and in our lifetime when Amen. we agree with, with who the enemy says we are, what the enemy says is going on around us, you know, what that person has done to us, you, um, you, you know, either either a friend or it could be even a political leader, you know, for instance, when we agree with a lesser standard uh, of than who God says they are or what God says is going on, then we empower um, the the enemy in our lives. Okay, we and, and it can be at a personal level, it can be at an organizational level, it can be at a national level. Even you, you see that with Israel, you know, all throughout the Old Testament at a national level. So how do we how do we unwind that? How do we break the power uh, of that? Because, because because that gives the enemy the right to steal, kill, destroy us yeah. at at a spirit level, at a soul level, at a physical level. Um, it's a major cause of health problems. Amen. Uh, you know, it's a major cause of mental and emotional problems. It's a major cause of, of, of conflict between people, between countries, between companies even, <laughs> you know, coworkers, Amen. you know, all that sort of thing. So, so how do we unwind that? Well, we start with, God, what's going on here in this situation? What have I, what have I done? You know, what have I come in agreement with that's a lesser standard than you? How, I mean, if you want to say, how have I sinned? You know, you, you can say that, whatever terminology, uh, you know, you want to use. And then, okay, God, I was wrong. <laughs> I, agree with, I agree with you. It was wrong for me to think unholy thoughts about my sister, my brother, my leader, you know, yeah. my, my country. And we break that, okay? But then we don't just stop right there. Then we, then we, move, we want to move into the blessing part. And, and, and sometimes as a result of that sin or that unholy agreement, you know, the enemy gets a real stronghold in our lives. Mm, okay? Amen. And, and, and there's, there's, there's a scale on, on that that, I mean, you, you see it anywhere. I mean, you see spirits of infirmity. You, you see all the way up to, you know, the Gadarenes or a person like Hitler who is totally sold out to, to the evil one. 
Amen. Well, there's always <laughs> freedom, deliverance, redemption is always available. Amen. Okay? The man of the Gadarenes had to sit down with Jesus when Jesus came to him and, and have some sort of exchange. Okay. It, it can look, it can look very different yes. regard, depending upon who you are, what your story is, exactly what happened. But at the end of the day, we're going to agree with Jesus and he's going to minister freedom and deliverance with you. But it starts with repentance. Amen. Okay. And, um, and we can repent on behalf of others. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so for instance, mm -hmm. it's called identificational repentance. Uh, you, you know, you, you see that some of the leaders, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, what Abraham was wrestling with God, you know, um, and, and Moses did this too. God, don't destroy your people. Uh, you know, Abraham, don't destroy your people. Um, you know, it just, it, and so with me, with my, you know, with my family, you know, I can say, you know, God, um, I forgive my family. I forgive on behalf of my family. You know, my, my church, I mean, who, I'm a, I'm a citizen of Dallas, Texas. So on behalf of my city, on behalf of my county, on behalf of my Amen. state, you know, a, a, as, a, as a United States citizen, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I, I can go. And to what extent is that effective? Well, certainly on a personal level, it's effective. As we go up the, the scale and the chain, um, it, it, it's it's effective to some extent. Um, obviously, you're going to have a different effect in your home versus on a national level. Mm -hmm. But how, how do we know that if God had called 100,000 people in the United States of America to repent for, for one thing, that you're the tipping point? Yeah. That, that, that you're yeah. the tipping point for deliverance that he wants to bring you. Or whatever yeah. you know, whatever your country is, we we don't know, but it's still moving the bar the bar Amen. higher. Amen. It's that that game changer for intercession, whether it's land, whether it's people, it's it's so powerful. And I just I just love the heart that you have for deliverance. So and this is where the Holy Spirit seems to be going. So if we need to do a later thing on the glory, we'll do it. But I always want to do what Holy Spirit wants. But um, I know you can relate to this. I don't know how much time you got. Just give me a time if you're good. But um, I feel like we need to just talk about generational curses because, you know, I have seen them um, actually impact somebody's whole life until age 50, 60, 70. So if you just want to talk about that, um, share whatever you feel led. I, um, I'll i share a quick story to, to give you a break. I know you've been, uh, let you take a sip, some sips of water, but um, what really got me interested in deliverance, um, obviously for my own bloodline and for my family, my kids, you know, across the board, basically, basically my own bloodline is when I was in ministry school, the Holy Spirit challenged me. I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, I haven't moved in deliverance before. And he said, I want you to break the spirit of premature death off of somebody's bloodline when they come up to this altar. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I've never heard of this spirit before. I'm like, what? This was like three years ago or something. And so I said, Lord, I just repent. You know, I don't even remember if I knew to say repent back then. That was, you know, in the beginning stages. I said, I just break that spirit of premature death off her bloodline. And she started bawling at the altar. And I'm like, oh, God, you know, Lord, what did I do? And she just said, the Lord just showed me that my grandbaby is not going to be taken out by the spirit of death now. Cool. That child, Whoa. That's cool. That's cool. So, Lord, I just feel the anointing to break that right now. So, Lord, we just come under agreement and the power of agreement. Anywhere where there was a spirit of premature death on your bloodline, we just repent on behalf of your ancestors, yourself. Just say it with me and my descendants, myself and my descendants. For any spirit of premature death, woo, we just command that out of the bloodline right now. We just uproot any demon associated with premature death all the way back to Adam. And we just say that assignment's canceled in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, generational curses. So, uh, you know, you, we, we still get, and I can still hear those questions, of, that Jesus did everything at the cross. And he did. He did, absolutely. But we have to apply it, right? <laughs> well, I mean, so I, so I got a question for those people who ask that. So Jesus did everything at the cross. How's your life going for you? Are, 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 you, still, are, you, still, are you still sinning? Do you, or do you still get sick? 
you know, do you, do you still have problems in your life? And, and it, 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 it is a, a, a theological reality, okay, but there's also practical reality. And, you know, as deliverance ministers, it's, it's been a settled question for a long time that <laughs> generational sin and generational curses exist and, um, and affect people and furthermore are a doorway or a gateway for the enemy to afflict people. Okay. And, he doesn't and, fight and, fair, right? He doesn't fight fair. He doesn't care. No. And uh, sometimes as deliverance ministers, we encounter things that we don't always have current theology for. Amen. Preach okay. it. <laughs> okay. So uh, and and, 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 so and that's, that's true. Um, you know, because back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, you know, John Sanford started doing, I mean, there probably were others, but John Sanford started doing inner healing, and he was a heretic, okay? <laughs> well, well, now, you know, inner healing is pretty mainstream among, you know, yeah. a, a lot of the bodies of Christ. I won't say everybody, yeah. you know, so there, there are issues that we deal with. And, and and sometimes we have to scratch our heads because God is so is is showing us something uh, that um, that actually He wants to reveal the theology for. Amen. And, and That's un so good. Unfortunately, the church, um, to to a, a large extent, has, they want to stay in their in their comfort zone. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll use your word. And, and 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 not explore those those really hidden secrets and mysteries that God wants to reveal. And so it, it's up to people like deliverance ministers, like seers, because then we go into yeah. then we go into the mystical um, yeah. to to um, to understand and to seek out the theology, okay, and and, and, and biblical truth. The, the Bible absolutely is the truth. And anything Amen. that we see, that we feel, that we experience um, that conflicts with truth in the Bible, um, the way God interprets it, you yeah. know, uh, is a problem. Amen. But, it, but if it conflicts with just with the way we've interpreted Scripture in the past, sometimes we need to revisit our interpretations. Amen. Uh, okay, so my personal opinion uh, is that the the enemy uh, can uh, just like God is outside time and space, um, the, the the enemy can see things along the whole timeline. Okay, he's not not eternal, can't be everywhere, but but um, but uh, understands how time works, and so he 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 wants to take out people in the future through Amen. a bloodline issue today. Amen. Okay? That's because be, because I, I, I believe that he creates a strategy to, to uh, that people um, agree with, and that's sin, you know, and then you have the overt things that go on, the cultic practices um, that, that, that happen. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a cultic. It, it can just be a businessman who lies, cheats, steals, um, that, that sort of thing, you know, any, any sort of a regular unholy practice, um, I, I believe it, it affects our bloodline. And when we say, when I say Amen. that, I mean it, I believe it actually affects our DNA. It's encoded Amen. in our DNA and it's, and then it's passed forward uh, down, down our DNA. All right. Amen. So then, so then when it comes to you and, and oftentimes it's repeated, and that's why we see things that are repeated in family lines. We see, we see alcoholism. We see addiction. We see divorce. We see or premature deaths, like you were talking about. You know, um, we, we see those sorts of things that are repeated over and over again. Usually, there's a generational issue Amen. That, that hasn't been addressed. Okay, um, because he sees that. All right, I know in 2019. April is going to be a powerful deliverance ministry. So back in 1819, I want to get a, um, you know, an ancestor to uh, actually do this unholy ceremony. Now, I'm not saying that happened. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's, so, it's true. It's so true. Um, 
So that's one reason I went and it to, and I, and I understand you all are going for this training. I went to Aslan's place Amen. Uh, and, and had, um, I think it was three sessions with Brian Cox, Paul Cox, awesome. and um, awesome. because I believe right now, um, as far as I know, they're the gold standard in bloodline cleansing. And, um, and, and I also believe that the higher we want to go, the greater the call in our lives, the, the, the deeper we have to go in our purifying, our cleansing, Amen. you know, our, our, our healing. And so, um, you know, I hear this, well, three or four generations back, the, the farthest issue that Brian and I dealt with was 72 generations. Okay. I believe it. Yeah. 72 generations. So I it's not it. just not just three or four. It can go way back because the, the enemy is a legalist. And, he is. And, uh, you know, if he can see something, you know, X number of generations ago, he's going to use it. Amen. So I, I just generational issues, generational curses. They're just a regular thing that, that uh, I do with people. Amen. Um, and so if you need that, I know April and, and Richard can help you with that. You know, I and my team can help you with that. Aslan's okay. Plays can help you with that. Uh, you know, most legitimate inner healing delivered ministries uh, have some grid for um, generational curses that they can help you with or generational strongholds, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I believe like-mindedness, you know, that's why we're flowing in this topic because I had to break so many generational curses on my bloodline. I, I didn't even know how many, man, it was intense. It was like curses of trauma, curses of abandonment, curses of abuse, curses of rejection. I mean, the list just went on and on and on. And, you know, usually there's occultism in the background of, of somebody in your bloodline and you have to deal with that. So I think it gives you, like you said, a new passion to to help others overcome when you realize that one curse affected somebody's whole life and, and that's what I think as well you as well as I we just want to see people totally free to walk in the glory you know walk in who God's called them to be as a son and a daughter and allow you know like we said the gifts of discerning of spirits or the seer realm to see what's in the bloodline and if you want to share any any story that, you know, obviously no names, but um, give an example of any bloodline curses, go right ahead that this brought freedom. Well, you know, I tend to use myself as, as an example. But, <laughs> I um, do too. Uh, you know, I, I want to, uh, every culture um, that I'm aware of has some sort of occultic um, standard, um, you know, and, and so I'm, um, Scotch Irish, a lot of a lot of UK um, bloodlines, and so back, you know, a lot of Celtic stuff. So there are the Druids. So so for me, I Druids uh, in in my bloodline, uh, and I can go back farther than that. But in uh, so I, I had to deal with some stuff that went on with with, with the Druids, okay, and break that off of me because I believe that. Usually, if you're really highly prophetic, if you have a real significant seer gift or, or any of these gifts, you know, you're not the first in your bloodline. Usually, Amen. It's, it's, usually it's, it's a gift Teach somewhere. It, 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 it may it's not so pop true. up every generation, but yeah. you know, it, it's been there somewhere. And so somewhere along the line, the enemy has tried to pervert it. And so, Amen. you know, so whether you whether you have Native American issues and, and, yes. and um, you know, shamans. Uh, w w you know, whether you have African or, or, you know, Haiti, you know, Caribbean, you know, witch yeah. doctors, uh, whether you have, you know, down in, um, uh, I'm here in Texas, we deal, deal a lot of uh, Mexico, uh, you know, people with, with Mexican heritage, you know, so you, so you had like the Aztecs, you know, South America, you had the Incas, you know, all, all had their own version of uh, wor sun worship. Um, yeah. of blood sacrifice, you know, you go back to the Middle East, you can go to Egypt, and you know, all, all that stuff's going on. There, every culture, I mean, we can go to Asia, you know, and, and, and same thing. It, it's 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 the same stuff. It's just repackaged a little bit differently for whatever your yeah, culture amen. background is. Amen. So um, that that's I, I tend to see that stuff, you know, on people with people. So so for me, uh, there was Native American stuff. Um, th there was 
um, there was druid stuff, um, and there, I mean, there was some stuff older than that, but, um, yeah, yeah, I can relate to that because my, my family had uh prophets on both sides that, um, played in the wrong stuff you know so my mom's side my dad's side and they were just hungry for the supernatural and unfortunately it wasn't in the church you right. know so what do seers do you know i find out as we're talking about seers you know the first thing the enemy does is try to bring fear in their life when they're small to shut their gift down that seems to be like number one uno thing that happens in a, in a young life of a seer and number two like you said to pervert the gifts so then you got to go and you got to face all the generational stuff you know, and, and depend on Holy Spirit, but God is faithful. You know, he brings the victory and he allows us to, like you said, I think the heavier the glory or the heavier the calling, whether it's, you know, to deliverance or whether it's prophetic or whether it's all of the above or whether it's glory, like you said, it's that clean heart process so that you're prophesying out of a pure vein, you know, <laughs> you can speak about that. <laughs> Well, I, I want. I feel led to, to do this right now. So there, yeah, there may be there may be some people watching this that um, you know you 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 are a current practitioner. You know you're you're involved in the New Age. You're you're involved in in some sort of pagan worship. You're 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 a witch. You're a shaman. That's okay. And I just want to say hi. I see you. Um, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, um, amen. In this name. I mean, you 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 probably are very really highly spiritually gifted we may have a different opinion on where your source and your flow comes from. Yeah. Um, and, and if that's true, I want to introduce you, you know, Jesus. to my spirit guide, uh, you yeah. know, who, who, whose name is holy and, and to the gateway, uh, the, 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 that, that I use to connect with the cosmos and his name is Jesus of Nazareth, you know? So, uh, and, and I want to, you know, have a conversation with you. Uh, and, and, and we, you know, we can talk because you, 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 there, there are, there are gifts and abilities, uh, that you may have that you, that you're, that you're walking in, uh, you know, that, and God says, I love you. I see you. You're my son and daughter too. You know, I want to have a relationship with you, but I want to do it out of love. I don't, I don't want to do it out of fear. I don't want to do it out of hate. I, 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 don't, I don't want to do it, you know, from negative emotions. I want to do it from a heart of, you're my son. You're my daughter. I love Amen. you. I want to have a relationship with you, you know. And um, so I, I just, I, I just want to throw that out there because I think Amen. that that may be an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, we see in the context of Jesus Christ, that's the way he he designed it. He's the gateway. He's the gateway to all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when and when you flow with him, it's freedom. You know, it's joy, it's laughter, it's love, it's peaceful. You're not fearful. You're not in competition. There's no power. You have more power. I have more power. It's none of that. It's all his power. It's Holy Ghost power. And you do it with an attitude to serve. Yep. So when you when you flow with Jesus, you, you actually um, do it to serve one another and, and to minister love to one another. So it, we just bless you into that. We just call you into salvation and just declare that you're moving in salvation in Jesus name. You know, so, um, so if you're on here, if you've been listening to this and you, you, you know, you're tormented by something, you know, you're, yeah. you're having night terrors. You, you, you see things, you know, in the day of the dark, you're, you're being stalked by something, you know, a black figure shows up in your, in your room at night. You, you're, you, you have tremendous fear you you feel icky things. I mean, all that. I, I want to tell you to to reach out to get some help. Contact yeah. April. You know, con contact me. Contact yeah. contact somebody who has a grit for that because you, you don't have you don't have to suffer with that. There is freedom and healing and deliverance, and we do we do speak that over you. And we Amen. all the all the angels that have been. I'm an angel guy too. Okay. Um, <laughs> all, all the angels that have been gathering that have assignments to that have keys of freedom and healing and deliverance for, for the people, we, we release you to go take those, yeah. those keys and yeah. minister to those people yeah. and to, to uh, lead them to a ministry, to lead them to a friend, to lead them to, you know, to, to a pastor or some sort of a spiritual mentor that has an answer for you. And, and, and honestly, and if you're alone, you don't know anybody, Jesus is the answer. 
you know, Jesus is the answer. You, you just call it to him and say, Jesus, I need you. I need you. I need your help. I don't yeah. want to be tormented by this any longer. Um, I, I claim your cross for my situation. Yeah, amen. That's good. And I, I just want to, to comment on that because I wrote a book, Gateway to My Miracle, and, and you can buy it. I was instantly healed of fibromyalgia. But, you know, God started the process of inner healing by Holy Spirit. Like nobody taught me on inner healing. Nobody. I mean, obviously, since then, I've done tons of training on it. But he initiated, you know, he pulled out the trauma. He pulled out neglect. He pulled out all this stuff. And it was just, it was so odd. It's just the way God flowed with me in my relationship with Holy Spirit. I think that's why I'm so close to him is it felt like just chunks. Cause I'm a feeler, like chunks of pus just came out every time. And he would tell me the name of it. And so um, that's one of the things I just want to challenge you on. If you, if you don't have access to an inner healing minister or, or time or, you know, whatever the reason is just area just ask Holy Spirit because he started the process with me. And then thus far, you know, there's some deep things that he still is the only one that he will allow me to walk through inner healing with. Now, have I prayed with other people since then? Absolutely. You know, iron sharpens iron, but there's some things that the Holy Spirit that are just so deep, you know, I'll just share this and, and maybe you can relate, David. I had a dream where a certain prophet, she just, it was so funny because this is just like God. It's such his goodness. She just said, I'm here to rip out everything that's too painful for you to cry out. And she just started ripping it out. Mm. Of me. <laughs> I was like, hallelujah. You know, what a great testimony that God can bring inner healing and, and deliverance through dreams. So I just felt the anointing to just impart dreams. So David, whatever you feel led to, to impart, I know we probably need to wind this up. If you're up to it, maybe we'll just do a part two because God's just flowing. But um, I just impart like whatever I have that you need and you can impart, David, whatever you feel led after. I just impart to you right now, if it's deliverance anointing, if it's prophetic, inner healing anointing, glory, I just release it over you right now in the name of Jesus. I just see the Lord opening up dreams for people. And Lord, I just declare that you even set people free in dreams, that you bring inner healing in dreams, that you bring impartation of gifts, anointings, mantles, whatever they need in their dream life. And Lord, we just... You're discerning to say, just renounce it. I don't believe in fear. I command fear out. God's love, just come in alignment with the truth. God's love is perfect inside of you. So we just declare that your gift, we just bless your your um, giftings, your callings, your anointings, and what God wants to do in your life. Amen. Thank so you. yeah, I'm a big dream guy, and I get a lot of um, a lot of deliverance dreams. Amen. For, for myself and for others. So I do. Amen. I do just release that. Uh, to to you guys to um, to receive dream open your spirit up in the night season to yes. receive communication from the one who truly loves you to give you keys of moving forward keys of freedom yes. keys of hope and deliverance and wh whatever God shows you don't be afraid to Amen. act on it. okay just don't be afraid to act on it and 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 reach out. The enemy wants to keep you isolated, so I draw you into community right Amen. now, and I bless you as a father. You know, those of you who need a father's blessing, I just Amen. bless you as a Amen. father. That's good. You, you, you're April. You're a good daughter, <laughs> and mm. Richard, you're a good son, and there are good sons and daughters. You know, mm. watching this, listening to this, so I just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and Lord, we just command every hidden thing and it comes to the light. I just feel led to pray any hidden things in your bloodline that could be hindering you. Like David said, that there's missing pieces or just hidden revelation that you need for the next season. I just thank you, Lord, that you're given the treasures of darkness to the light, that it's just coming to the light. And, and um, David, before I let you off here, I just wanted to pray. I feel led. I just had a breakthrough with the Holy spirit with breaking curses off of wombs. Um, somebody I prayed for is now pregnant and I just want to do that together and in, in unity for anybody that's watching so if you know anybody that that needs and been trying to have a baby this person has been trying to have a baby for like 10 years we just want to bless your womb it doesn't have to be complicated but I just I want to press into what the Holy Spirit's been doing and, and let David come in agreement with me and um, everybody flows different and like breaking curses and deliverance so just flow however you want to flow David but 
we just come under the law of agreement. We just break any generational curse right now that, that's affecting your womb. We just repent on behalf of your ancestors, yourself or your descendants for any iniquity that brought curse on your womb. We just break that power. We cut the cord of that iniquity, iniquity and agreement. Whoa. In Jesus' name, right now, we just speak life and health to your womb. Right now, we break any assignment of the enemy against the child. Any, um, I just see bell assignments, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're breaking bell assignments against the next generation. And you're calling forth the prophets in, in the womb right now. You're just birthing things forth. And we just bless the womb. We call that, that daughter, that son of God, to be just be fully um, developed in the womb. In Jesus' name. Yeah, so in, in um, I've had womb experiences where I had to go back in deliverance uh, for myself because two, two very significant things happened when I was in the womb. Number one, God, God called me. It's like he called Jeremiah. <laughs> um, but Amen. also the enemy came and tried to kill me in the womb. Amen. Um, but he didn't. And so if you didn't kill me, you're not going to kill these others. Amen. In Jesus' name, I speak life, and I break the power of death over the womb right now in Jesus' Amen. name. That's powerful. All right. Well, thank you, David. Thanks so Such much, David. This has been fun. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Glad, to, glad to chat with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share our, our PayPal. You know, this is totally up to you. I, I'll ask you to just post it underneath the link if people feel led to, to give, let people sow. Um, just, you know, always give it an option to sow because you, you sow for um, the Holy Spirit, not for us. So anywhere you felt led. And I just, I just love the, the way the Holy Spirit took it, you know. Well, maybe we'll do it the next one on the glory, but obviously... We just honor Holy Spirit and some people need to get free today. Amen. Thank you for coming. All right. Bless you. <laughs> Peace, guys. Bless you. <laughs> everybody that is another glory story for you so i would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with god and ask him to help you cultivate his presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that god wants you to be a part of 